What's up, babies? It's 2024. Brides, grooms, every client we have is more knowledgeable than ever in music and way more aware of what a remix and a mashup is. So as far as I'm concerned, you gotta learn to use some type of audio editing software, some type of DAW. And I have here today DJ Dot Studio, where I believe is the easiest one to use for people that aren't classically trained in Ableton or FL Studio or anything else like that. So join me through this walkthrough of DJ Dot Studio, and we might even make a little mashup at the end. So come on, let's check it out. So first up, why do I think you need to know how to use a DAW? First off, DAW, D-A-W, stands for Digital Audio Workspace. Basically, you know, the tools that we've come to know and love, things like Logic, Ableton, FL Studio. You can even consider things like Audacity and GarageBand. And there's obviously a bunch of others that you can include adobe audition i guess but for me i've used a bunch of different ones and none of them really seem to fit like the workflow that i was used to which is basically just doing everything live on serato so i've been able to make edits for clients in the past but i've noticed a huge huge almost exponential growth of these requests in 2024 for things like introductions for the last song for things in ceremony for just random parts of the night for the fact that people are requesting big booty mix for their wedding all the time, I realized that I really needed to ramp this up a little bit and really try to like extend my knowledge and my expertise and at the same time probably become a better DJ. So I've known about this app DJ Dot Studio for a while. I did a video on it, which you can check out corners, but that was at a very early stage and we've had some new integration into DJ Dot Studio that we didn't have before. We're gonna dive back in. We're gonna take a peek at the HUD. We're gonna look at the like Spotify and YouTube integration. And then most importantly, I wanna show you guys how to make like a quick little edit just to see how simple it is. Just a heads up, right now you can get a 14 day trial. No credit card required. All you gotta do is go to dj.studio right in your address bar, it's that easy. You can start playing around with it, get a little feel for it, maybe even play along as we walk through this. And while you're at it, you can hit the like and subscribe button on the video. Look at me, I'm getting better at asking for this. This is great. So yeah, hit that like, hit that subscribe, get to dj.studio, get this downloaded, and let's jump into this whole little walkthrough of the whole thing. How about it? So you're not missing much down in the corner that I'm covering right now. It's basically just like a little support button. But I wanted to kind of look through all this and kind of talk through it too. So you can quickly see your local music and how to quickly start stuff. I've done an intro for a couple that I'm working with soon. I did another sort of project with Taylor Swift September over September by Earth, Wind & Fire. I made a really long orchestral hip hop mix off of some really cool like Vitamin String Quartet, Josh Vietti, etc. music. And then this is actually what we're going to be working on in a little bit. So no PCs. But yeah, let's take a peek. So this is the home page. Look at this. Cool. They got a little contest. That's kind of neat. You can scroll down and you can see some awesome ways to just learn about the app, whether it's through the Academy, whether it's through this guy's YouTube videos, which are super helpful, but kind of long, or whether it's this guy's videos right here, which I'll admit are great and helpful, but they just, they seem a little... So what I'm looking for, like lacking, a little empty, but it got me going with any app or program. I think it's best to just dive in and kind of start to work on it yourself. So that's basically what we do, but it's pretty cool because you have all these options here to kind of work together with the app. So Beatport, BeatSource, YouTube, Spotify, of course, your own MP3 library, which is going to be in sort of like your local music. Let's check out the Spotify thing first real quick, right? So you can... Jump in here. We're going to jump to Spotify. I just happen to be looking up your love by the outfield on here. So let's take this all out 80s and let's highlight. We're just going to take the first 50 and let's make a new playlist. Oh, they called it Dancing in the Dark. We're just going to rename it DJ.studio sample. One, one. Save, copy the link. Paste the link, it automatically starts working. So I think Spotify came after DJ.studio and now they have to convert everything into YouTube videos, which kind of takes a long time, so. Oh, 
There we go. As soon as I say something, of course. All right, so here we go. So we got all the songs in here and check it out. It's pretty sweet. It tells you the title and the artist, of course. It tells you the length, the key, and the BPM. We're just gonna select them all and we're gonna create a mix with the 50 tracks. So here it goes through and imports them again. It double checks them, yada, yada, yada. And boom, it's done. So you get this pop up at the end. You can simply jump straight into the auto mix. You can, you know, assist it with the reordering. You can choose the type of transitions that you have. And then this is just basically the explanation of mood versus fuzzy and how it works. So it's basically telling you that it could do it in two different ways, mainly focusing on harmonics, but also giving you the option to do some more exciting transitions. But we're going to go to auto mix. Let's check this out here. Let's do mood. You can change your BPM tolerance, which the four BPM is kind of its limit versus being infinite, which to me is kind of annoying. I'd love some more options there. You can even lock in your first and last track, which I think is kind of cool. I don't actually know what calculation time is, but I think the longer it is, the better. So let's just do 30 seconds and let's click this auto mix and let's see what comes up. So you'll see here that they come up with a bunch of combinations of all the songs. Obviously we have 50 songs. That's exponential is 50 to the exponential math math 50 exclamation point that's 50 times 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 etc it's crazy amount so yeah we end up with 269 million options let's double check that let's double check that calculator Ooh, do we have to turn this sideways when's the last time you turned your calculator sideways clear 50 exclamation i don't know is that the same as 269 million i don't know anything it's a lot it's a lot so let's hit finish and then you can kind of check out how everything lined up either by looking at the carousel. So you can kind of see both. So you can see the songs that are coming up next. You can see how the transition was happening. And you can also see the timeline, which I'm a big fan of actually looking at the timeline. That's just sort of my style. So yeah, I don't really, yeah, at the end of the day, the goal of this is not for me to want to look at it. It's so that it just does it, right? So you can see it's it's mixing 11B, 10B, back up to 11B to 12B to 9A. Okay, to 10A to 11A. It's working. It's working. Let's see if we can listen to like a transition real quick though. So this is where I get annoyed is that like this should be starting up here. Like it just, it just dropped into like kind of a random part of the song. See, that's much better. So the, you do have to go in and you got to listen to every transition to make sure that it's right. And that wasn't even beat matched. Like, that was terrible. But it is St. Elmo's Fire mixed with Kiss by Prince. So, yeah, it's probably not going to come out perfect. But hey, if you are using your own music and not stealing something from Spotify or YouTube and you want to make a mix out of this stuff, I think it's a very easy way to just plop it in and go. Versus live mixing, if it's at like a corporate thing, something in the background, or you need to be somewhere else DJing, this could be super helpful. So if you need to, you can jump into the playlist and you can rearrange things, right? You see that? I don't know what solve means, but I like it. Ooh, it suggests songs that you can add. Those aren't good options considering all of these are from the 80s, but still cool all the same. This must be pulling off of the music that I already have on here. Ain't nobody to nine to five to man in the mirror. What a mix. Yeah, then also you can browse on YouTube and Spotify on here if you want to, you know, put mixes together. I feel like this is a little more also trying to be directed towards people that love music but are tired of listening to, you know, like ads on YouTube or ads on Spotify or hearing that gap in between. I love that Spotify has the crossfader option on there, but this is taking that to a whole nother level. So pretty fun. All right, so I'm done with that part. I'm very done with that part. Back to the home page. But real quick, as of this week, we have hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. We did it in just under a year, which is crazy. And it's so fun. I was worried that I was going to quit as soon as I reached a milestone. But now our next milestone is massive, and we're looking for 10,000. I'm not doing 2,500. I'm not doing 5,000. I'm trying to 10x this shit. And I just want to say thanks to all of you that are watching this video and have watched all the other ones. You've helped me out a lot just with keeping myself motivated and commenting and keeping me back and actually on YouTube's platform. So I just wanted to take a couple seconds to say thanks so much. If you are new here, if this is the first video you're watching, then please hit that subscribe button and follow along with the other 1,000 plus people that think that there's some value to this channel. 
and hit it with a like or a dislike too. Even if this is the part you hate, but I just want to say thanks to everybody that's come out. We do need to come up with a name for all of you too, so <laughs> try to figure it out. But thanks again. Let's get back into it because now's the really fun part where we're going to make this mix that I've been talking about. All right, so I already hit the create a new mix button. What we're going to do is we're going to use local files because that's what we got. So before we get into this too much, I got to say this app is still pretty buggy. I'm pretty sure I can still recreate a bug almost every single time. When we get in, I'll give it a shot. Actually, let's do it right now. Let's just throw these two in here. We're going to hit a quick save. DJ studio sample one mashup. We're going to go to the studio. Let's see if it works. Oh, holy shit. They fixed it. Used to be if you just clicked like one, two, three really quickly in a row, it would lose its mind and it would completely break. So they're clearly fixing it. There's updates every single day almost on this thing. And now I know that they're actually working on it, which is really cool. An app is nothing without support. So the fact that these guys are diving into this so deep, I'm a huge fan now. So there you go. That was my opening statement on this and it has been debunked. All right, so now we're in here. Let's make this quick little mix. I have been playing around with this a ton. I actually kind of just discovered it while I was playing with music the other day. And I thought it'd be kind of fun just to add like a little bit of acapella to the tremor. So first, this space is going to be like your actual, what's the best way to say this? This is going to be like your actual stem space. This is going to be your actual transition space where the two songs work together. You can't really just like move this here, you know, because then it's blocked out. So we do move it there, but then we just got to make sure that we have the room to play with. Some of the navigation on this is a little different. First, we're going to go to the transition and I'm going to turn off and we're going to hit none and none. That's basically going to negate any and all actual transitions. So pretty easy. You can use your scroll wheel to move, you know, in and out. You click, you click, you click and you click and drag to move the timeline side to side. And you've got your timeline up here too that you can click and then it can show the entire song. And then of course you have got some EQs on everything. You even have the option to master at the end, which is, which is pretty cool. So there's a number of different ways to view the entire workspace here. You got your full zoom, which is a little more for like the detailed stuff, which I'll be using a bit. Playlist, which isn't much, but if you do need to reorder the tracks, then you can. All right, whatever, we'll redo that. <laughs> Again, your transitions where I just undid the undoing and we got to redo it. You can take a peek at details of the tracks as far as like pitching and beat gridding and even be able to change the key so that they, so they work a little better together, which we're going to swap that to 4A. You got some video option stuff, which I haven't really played around with yet, but it looks pretty cool. You can kind of just throw animations in to make video tracks for everything. I don't want that though. I don't like it. Some little effects. You can add echo, reverb, flanger, noise, pitch, filters, all that stuff. So let's dive into it. Come on, come on, come on. Make that transition long all the way out, all the way out. Show me everything. Boom. Boom. All right. So tremor, you're probably familiar with it. What I want to do is, so David Guetta's Family Affair comes in cold with the lyrics. This tremor is obviously just basically one long instrumental except for a couple words. So what we want is the vocal to basically, I think, come in right here. Yep. So I want the lyrics to basically start right as that beat drops. So for that, we're going to make sure it's somewhere around here. We're going to go all the way in where you can start to use the beat markers and manipulate them a little bit. So let's mute this track so that we can find the vocal. So that's boom, let's get it. Kind of want to, I hate when it does this. Just leave it where it was. And again, kind of frustrating. Cool, bang. Let's see how it sounds together. Oh, what are you doing? You're showing perfectly and then you move. This is where it starts to get a little frustrating. But it's okay, we're locking in, we're locking in. Zoom back in. Just be where you're showing you're gonna be. Okay, so this clearly isn't making me happy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, we're gonna set his first beat. Maybe that'll change things. Why do you scroll so far away? And absolutely did not even set where, where I just pointed as the first beat. I'm deleting the track. The whole thing, I want the whole thing. I just really don't understand why it has to move every time. It's not even showing the full track anymore. Like what's going on? Why are you like this? I don't fucking know. I have no idea what, what I'm doing right now. This is, it's like completely different. 
Okay, I got it back to where where I'm working. One cool feature I do like about it is you can you can kind of hear each little drop, so to speak. Oh my god, you gonna let me touch you now? Wait. Okay, cool. I think I fucking got it lined up. Wait, I set that as the first beat. You saw me do it. Okay, we finally got it lined up. Let's give it a listen, right? Build up. Let's get Cool, right? Sick. So, blend, done. But we gotta limit it a little bit. So we got some stuff to play with. We're gonna do some stemming. We're also gonna do some cutting out like in the verses and stuff because this is basically just repeating Family Affair over and over and over again. So let's go to the end and we're gonna hit it with a split. And I think we're gonna split it here again. And then we're gonna mute that selection. Pretty cool, right? So we gotta take this, meow, and take this, meow. There, I should fix that. Me? Oop, too far, too far, too far, too far. Right there, right there. So just dance for me. Maybe a little drop off. I like that. There we go. Let's listen to this part. All right, so we're going to do a split again. We're going to go stems. And then I want to go for this section too. Up to the split. There we go. And we're gonna get rid of everything except the vocals on this and everything except the vocals on this. And then in this section, we're gonna show stems because we're gonna, I wanna leave those beefy drums in. Those things are fun. Ding, ding. We're playing. Cool. Okay, okay, okay. That's dropped, is that dropped? All right, let's listen to the whole thing kind of. Peanuts. Okay, it needs to be a little longer. Ooh, it's for me. There's the drums. All right, I, I love it. I mean, I don't make anything, so of course I love it. But between you and me, I've made this now four times. This was my fourth version. The first time was real quick and easy, just basically layering them on top of each other. The second time I tried to make this video and I forgot to hit record. The third time I remembered to hit record, but I had so much trouble with the app that I kind of just left. And then this final time, we had an okay time with the program. But we came out with something, in my opinion, is way fuller than what I did the previous times, which was basically just layering Mary J over the chorus. So now actually including a verse, doing a couple different stemming of stuff. I had a really good time with it. And it only took, what? What was that? I don't know. Like 45 minutes. That's amazing. I know some people are very well trained in the DAWs that they have been using for a really long time. And I'm not trying to discredit anything that they're doing. But I am saying this is a really easy way to get introduced to editing music. So basically take those ideas, throw them at something, have the tools that you need in order to make it work. That's amazing. This is the cream and sugar to a coffee, in my opinion. Everybody that drinks coffee, in my opinion, strives to drink just black coffee, right? You don't want any of those additives. But when you're starting off, you don't like the taste of coffee. You like the taste of cream and sugar. So of course you put that in, but then over time you develop the skills, you develop the flavor palette in order to move simply to plain black coffee. And then eventually you're drinking some crazy shit. Same with many things. For right now, I'm chilling here with my cream and sugar, having a fun, easy time, putting all this stuff together and coming up with ideas and being able to make them a reality. So again, not knocking anything anybody else does that's way more experienced and way better at this than me, but... I just wanted to try and showcase DJ Dot Studio and how it's it's making what we're doing easier and faster. So thanks for coming out and watching me struggle bus with this thing. As with anything, the more time you spend with it, the better you're going to get. So I'm going to be trying to do one of these like, I don't know, once a week, something like that, maybe as long as I come up with ideas. But hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, if you learned something, if this has helped you make a decision on DJ Dot Studio, remember that if you need any more help making a decision, you can always go to dj.studio in your web address bar and you can check out that 14 day free trial. I don't know if Stems comes with the trial. I do know it is about a hundred buck extension, but as far as I know, it's lifetime. So yeah, get out there, start making some cool edits. Let's have fun with this. I'm gonna try and post this edit as well. If you like it, let me know. Maybe I can send it over to you. We'll find a way to do all that stuff. So thanks again for coming out. It's your boy, DJ Hi Kevin. Here with DJ.studio. For me, this is getting an absolute check, an absolute pass. So appreciate you coming out. See you next time. Three, two, one, go!